On our radar today is Indusind Bank, RBL Bank, Yes Bank and IDFC all reacting to their quarter one numbers. My colleague Abhishek joins in now to take us through what the numbers look like and what stood out this time around. It's a big spike up in Indusind Bank, Abhishek, so let me start with that. Indusind Bank's board has approved fundraising of rupees 3,290 crores via preferential issue. So they'll issue, uh, you know, shares to uh, promoter as well as few investors like Route 1, Tata, AIA and ICIS approved. So these investors will have a lock-in of one year while promoter will have a lock-in of three years. The moratorium book is down to 16% when compared to 50% earlier. And loan growth had weakened to about 2.5% growth on a YY basis, but it declined more than 4% on a sequential basis. On account of, uh, you know, improvement in cost of funds, they have been able to improve their net interest margin to 4.28 when compared to 4.2% in the previous quarter. RBL back their operating profit growth was the weakest ever, growing at just 11% YOY and declining by around 10% sequentially. The moratorium book is down to 14.5% when compared to 33% last time. The loan growth was weak and declined for the first time ever on a YOY basis, so it was down about 0.3%. 3% YOY and about 2.3% sequentially. However, the rising trend that you are seeing uh, in the net interest margin and the margin remaining superior has not translated into a return ratio trending up. So, ROE still remains in lower single digits. Yes, Bank, the deposit momentum was strong on a sequential basis growing at 11.5%. So, this gives a bit of confidence, uh, you know, that they are able to get uh, deposits. Advances growth remain weak in line with what you are looking at the uh, macroeconomic situation. No details on moratorium has been given. However, they reported profits for the first time in last four quarters. Coming on to IDFC First Bank, that deposit momentum was really strong, especially on the retail deposit front. Retail deposits grew by 17.5% quarter on quarter, which meant that the overall deposit grew by more than 7% on a sequential basis. The net interest margin increased to 4.53 when compared to 4.24% in the previous quarter. The moratorium uh, book, however, remained elevated at 28% of the book when compared to 35% earlier and their advances were down about more than 9% YOY and about 0.1% sequentially. Back to you. All right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for that. Well, moving on, FMCG major Nestle is trading low on the back of its Q2 performance. Mangalam is here to tell us the key takeaways this time around. Mangalam. If you went to a store at the start of the lockdown and could not find Maggie, that explains the sort of weakness that we saw in the company's quarter. The revenues came in at around 3,050 odd crores. The street was working with a number of 3,225 odd crores. Domestic revenues grew just 2.6% this time around. The street was expecting a number anywhere between 8 to 10 percent, primarily because one, the packaged food nature of the company's business, and secondly, over the last 10 12 quarters, domestic revenue business or domestic business has grown at around double digits or 10 to 12 odd percent. That was one. The second thing is that the company, you know, saw a decline in the gross margins. The EBITDA came in much below expectations despite them saving on other expenses and as a result of which the net profit also came in lower. Management commentary, however, has been very positive. They believe the momentum is back with them towards the end of the quarter. They fixed all the supply chain issues. But at 64 times FY22 earnings, the street finds this as a reason to pause perhaps on the big rally that we've seen on Nestle. Okay, thanks a lot, Mangalam, for that. But moving on, uh, we told you first and now it's official. The Prime Minister will be holding a meeting with the chief of key banks and NBFCs later this evening to discuss a roadmap and vision for the future. Ritu Singh joins in now to give us more details on what one can expect. Ritu, over to you. Prime Minister Modi will be holding a brainstorming session with banks and NBFCs later this evening to discuss and deliberate on a vision and roadmap for the future. We're given to understand that broadly there will be four themes around which bankers will be making presentations to the government uh, headed by Prime Minister Modi and several other key government officials that will be part of this meeting. Among the key themes are one, digitization of financial services, credit link subsidy schemes and the larger topic of revival of the economy. Uh, now, as for the government's own press release, the topics on the agenda include credit products and efficiency models for delivery, 
financial empowerment through technology and prudential practices for the stability and sustainability of the financial sector. We're also given to understand that heads of State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, Bank of Baroda, uh, Axis Bank, uh, HDFC Bank, and among NBFCs, Bajaj Finance, HDFC Limited are some of the key players that are expected to join this meeting with the Prime Minister. We will be tracking this meeting very closely and update you with the outcome right here on CNBC TV 18. All right, that's a big one today, Ritu. Thanks a lot for that. Let's slip into a short break. But on the other side of the break, plenty of stock talk lined up. And of course, all the latest bits of news. Don't go anywhere.